basically, um, all the things that I'm learned in the past, uh, I'm just trying to put forward to them. You know, um, I've been experienced, I've been around for you know most of my life. Um, so I just want to pass on what I know to them. Uh, and I, I always say boxes are art. It's not just going out there punching people. You got to be thinking also. So uh, just like I was telling them earlier, I was saying, letting them know I can only do so much. I can come here and drill them and drill them and drill them. But when they get in the ring, they're basically on the end. You know, I can only try to remind them and hopefully they go out there and execute what I'm going to teach them. So basically, like I said, I'm going to teach them the art. Because boxing deals with mental, physical, emotionally, as the individual has got to be involved. You know, so like I said, I can just do my best and, and the rest is up to them. Yeah, one of my most memorable fights was, uh, was Pedro Estrada. Uh, that was for the New York State Championship in 1984. Um, that was like one of the hardest fights I'm ever had. Uh, that was the first time I, I've been dropped. Um, you know, I was in La La Land. I had to trade the guard to bring me back. And um, things worked out. Like, in the seventh round, I knocked him over. So, in America, that was one of the best little fights in America that year. The best fight was Tommy Hearns and Marvin Hagler. So, they stole it from me. So it's all good. <laughs> but I would like to have more of a, um, uh, a national program, you know, island-wide program, Bermuda program, you know, for the youngsters so they could, you know, develop and, and um, you know, not everybody's going to be academically, but, um, you know, they might have the, you know, the fight in them, you know what I mean, to, uh, to make a change in their life. Because boxing is not always about uh, going out there and fighting because you know how to fight. You can avoid fighting, you can put you on a better path. And I know a lot of fighters that came out of Tampa View Center that probably thought they wasn't going to go nowhere and end up changing their whole life. That's a lot of guys. Some guys get hit and they just, it's, it's not for them. Some guys get hit and they, I mean, from like I said, myself, at a young age, I used to get hit and sometimes I didn't even know. I'm not worrying about that. I'm, I'm worrying about destroying my opponent. You know, so if you're not got that gut feeling, you know, some guys get hit, they feel it. And if you're feeling like that, that means you're, you're not really tuning in with yourself. You know, because not everybody's got the heart to take a punch. So, you know, you, you, you'll find out. Some guys take a punch and then panic. Some guys don't panic. So you just got to weed them out. I'm not saying you got to have that killer instinct, but it's almost like you have to have a killer instinct. Uh, for myself, I can experience for myself, when I went in the ring, I was always putting my life on the line. Because now, you know, anything could happen. You know, it could be good, it could be, you know, something bad. But um, you have to have the gut. You have to have that, that gut. You know, you got to have the guts to do it. You know, you, you, and like I said, what you put in is what you can get out of it. I will be how to... Oof. Oh, that's all, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's a wrap. Let's go ahead and make this thing a positive thing. Because this is all we got here. This is all we got. And if you bail, not hate me. 
you can talk about the rest of your life why you didn't fight or what happened or that doesn't make no difference. You need to be able to sit here, win, lose, or draw. Boxing is not a guarantee, you understand me? But in order for you to accomplish anything, you have to put your act together and you have to try your diamonds to go ahead and do what needs to be done. So what I want from you guys is now, I'm gonna be your baby. But you're gonna have Troy, you're gonna have Lightning, you're gonna have Clarence Hill up here. My son's coming on as well. And I want you guys to go ahead and train hard and get yourselves together, right? Now, before you go, I want you to come inside because I want to show you the guys that you're going to fight. I apologize for the language. No, that's all right. That's what happens. But I do want you guys to think about what you say before you say it. Because once you say it, it's safe. I've been fighting since 1950. 49, 50. You see what I'm saying? And I've been all over the side. I've been around the U.S. since 1968. Now I met Troy Darrell, Ken Penton, Anthony Fowler, Norman Say, Clarence Seal, Gary Hoop, Reginald Raymond, Johnny Fruit Pot. I can go on and on and on. And every one of those guys have accomplished something. Reg has his own gas station. Duty Treat has his own apartment. You know what I mean? Anthony Fowler has his own paint construction business. And every time they see me, they see me say, hey coach, hey coach, hey coach. It makes me feel good. I've done the best I can do with what I have. I've never asked anybody for anything, you understand? And you guys know, you don't have to pay nothing to come here to train. I wouldn't ask you nothing. You understand? All I want you to do is respect the gym, respect the people that are around you, and give me your best. I can't ask for no more than that. Okay? All right. I love you guys. You guys gotta, you gotta show me that you, you love what you're trying to do too. So, forget all the argument and stuff like that. Okay, fine. Okay. Well I, well, I opened this gym here in 1980, right? And I had all the young men from our City Hill, Tory Russell and all those boys come here, Joe Rowe, Ron Rogers, he was here. All the guys came here to this gym. And it's been so positive for me that, you know, the guys just keep coming in. It's the thing to keep the young men off the street, see? I feel that if I can keep one young man from going up to the Westgate, that I have accomplished something. And that's my big role with these young boys. So I really appreciate them and I appreciate the support that I get as far as people supporting the gym, right? Um, I, like I said, I started in 1980 and it's been going on and it's been advancing all the time. When I first started, it was just a little thing up and just I had my garage, that's all. And um, all I had was like a little tabletop for them to skip on where you see what's happening now. It don't look like much, but it's the real thing. What? Yeah, my name is Jason Clark, and um, you know what motivated me to start boxing is uh, I wanted to harness the uh, the energy that I have in me, like you know that that warrior spirit, like you know what I mean. I didn't want it to get stagnant. I wanted to actually just put it to good use, and I'm always love boxing. My dad is love boxing. My mama loves boxing. <clears throat> I remember coming up watching Tyson and Lennox Lewis and Holyfield, and you know I just always wanted to do it so. And one of my boys came over here, Rigo used to train him. He, he weren't necessarily as interested, but when Rigo asked me, am I interested? I was like, you know what, yeah, it's something I like to do, you know what I mean? So that's, that's really, that's what it was about. Um, the exhibition boat that I did actually gave me, um, even though I, you know, I, I, I done my best, I didn't come out victorious, but it just gave me the confidence to know that I could actually go in there and do it, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm scared, I didn't back on or, you know, nothing like that there. So, just having that, that confidence was like, all right, cool, I can do it. And um, getting into this fight right here, I'm just honestly like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna execute everything that you guys have talked about, but I just really wanna just, just try and kill this guy, to be honest. Like, I've got something in me, I just wanna get it out. Cause in training, you know, we're just tapping around and we're just doing different things. So I really just wanna give it my all and see where, where it go from there, you know what I mean? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, I just want to do my best, you know what I mean? I, mean, I got a lot of plans for my future, and I'm just, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket, so I got my eggs in boxing, I got my eggs over, I got my eggs over there. 
And um, you know, I just wanna do my best, you know what I mean? I really just wanna just do my best. I wanna execute, I wanna feel good. Um, I'm just the best shape I've ever been in my life, so I'm thankful for that. And I just wanna bring prestige to the gym and do my best, cause we get done a lot for, for Bermuda and for fighters. So I just, I just wanna actually just add to that legacy the best I can. Well, I, I, I realized even from that one fight, it was like, you know, you get hit and then you get mad. But if getting mad don't help, you know what I mean? Getting, getting mad, it just makes you sloppy, like, you know what I mean? So in my, in my press exhibition fight, that's why I was, I was getting hit a lot, because I was actually just, it was more of an anger thing, like, I weren't, I weren't composed or nothing. But, like, even in that, in that boat, some, I, I showed myself that I, I, I executed certain things, like I rolled under a punch, gave him a good punch, stumbled him, I hit the guy, I have an uppercut, blooded his nerves, and, and, and that was more when I was in my compared state, you know what I mean? So the more I go about fighting and the more I go about sparring and the more I go about, you know, taking hits, I could, I could, I could keep my compares and learn, okay, boom, that's how it feels, you know, and let me not do that again. And, and more times when you're fighting and you, you get a stinger, you don't necessarily see it. So the, when you train, you're training to move and constantly move and bobbing and weaving and your footwork. So you don't have to see it. Because the guys can throw it in, but you're already out the way type thing, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm learning now to just keep moving and just keep getting out the way and using my offense to be, be a def defense as well, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, my name is Shio Kitake. I'm, um, I left Premier about 10 years ago, pursue a career in boxing. And uh, but now I'm back home trying to get back and do what I can with Mr. Rigo. Well, I feel pretty good about the fight coming up. You know, I feel pretty good. I feel I got a lot of, a lot of bit, lot of running left to do, a lot of conditioning to get back in shape, and got a bit of sparring to do. But I feel pretty good. Well, yeah, it really would be nice to, to, to get the government to help assist this sport better in Bermuda because uh, you see, it's it's, a, it's a only Olympic medal we got out of this out, through boxing so far. You know what I mean? And you know, you watch other countries and the, the level of skill that we guys have. You know, just from training with Rigo here, I learned. It shows how far we can really take it. Like you know, after competing against guys overseas with what little what we got, so you could imagine if government were to you know take the finger and help do help do a little something better with the sport, make a big difference. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, you know, most locals come out to this event. This is a big event. You know what I mean? It's an exciting sport. It's probably one of the most exciting sports since cup match going on in Bermuda. And hope everybody comes out and shows their support. And I think it's going to be a good event. And I would like for people to come out and support this organization and support this fight that's here. And Nick is going to give his best at this fight and Teresa is going to give her best. And I would like for them to come out and, and see this fight because it's important to us that we have this fight.